Welcome to Scoop Bar. We are live with Monday night. It is Brown Steelers. It is Ohio State versus Notre Dame. A lot of uh, great football is going to be played in the next six days. We're going to get into that with Bill the Bank Green. We appreciate him as always. Uh, offensively um, and defensively, Ohio State is clicking at all cylinders. 63 to 10 versus Western Kentucky. Uh, number two overall in scoring defense, the most important stat in all of uh, football. These guys are grinding. We're excited for them. So we're going to get right into that. But as always, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, along with me, the bank, Nevada Buck, all of us that are on here every night. Um, if you enjoy this content, please leave us a like, click subscribe. Also click that little alert bell. That alert bell lets us know when you guys are ready to roll. You guys jump in here. All of our regulars are always, there, always in here. Uh, shout out where you guys are watching from. Again, I've seen... Uh, Naples, Florida. I've seen Miami. I've seen Portsmouth. I've seen uh, everywhere across the country, um, Los Angeles. So I appreciate you guys uh, globally as well. So let me know where you guys are watching from and let's get this thing rolling. We are going to get right into this with my boy, Bill the Bank Green. Bank, what are you thinking about Ohio State at Notre Dame? Marcus Freeman, Ryan Day, um, you know, Joe Alt, left tackle versus JT Tumaloa, Jack Sawyer. Again, a lot of heat on our defensive ends. No sacks yet. They're about to play the best tackle they're going to see all, all year, frankly. And uh, what are your thoughts on this game? Are you decent? I know that, you know, the Wake Forest quarterback is very, very, very good. Uh, he's you know, He's got amazing statistics so far. What are you feeling about this game thus far? Well, I think it's going to be a great game. <clears throat> I think Las yeah. Vegas has Ohio State as a three-point favorite i thought it would be like seven that surprises me that's that low which tells me you know pretty much what they think about this game so i think it's gonna be a great game i think it'll be you know shockingly one in the trenches um if two and sawyer can pressure the edge like they did last week and that was a good offense for western kentucky their defense yeah. is horrific i mean they're it's the worst defense in the country there's you know so they're ranked in the hundreds, but that offense is good. And that O line's not bad for them. And if, you know, if you can huh. get Sawyer and JTT pressuring from the outside, Ty Leak and Mike, Michael Hall pressuring from the inside, then you can drop seven, you know, back in coverage. You don't have to commit that many guys to, to rush the passer then. And I, if they can pressure with four, it's going to be hard for Notre Dame to score over 30. And the flip side of that is if the Ohio State O-line can't hold up against the Notre Dame D-line, then they're going to struggle to get the 30. So this game's won by whichever O-line takes over the game. And, <clears throat> you know, you got to keep those quarterbacks upright. McCord, you saw the other day, if he's not pressured, he can play a pitch and catch with huh. anyone. He can huh. throw it. But if you, may, if you move him off his spot, he is not, you know, he's not Pat Mahomes on the run. Yeah. So that's the key. You keep him clean with those receivers. Notre Dame cannot cover those guys. So the best way to cover Ibuka and Harrison is knocking McCord off his spot, knock him down, hurry him, speed that clock up. And then Sam Hartman, if Sam Hartman gets time, and I know Notre Dame does not have elite, you know, NFL wideouts, but – you know, he's going to get somebody open if he's got time, and he is going to hit somebody. That guy knows how to play. Um, you know, he's played big games before, and he's played against great defenses. He played against Clemson, played against Florida State, and he didn't have big-time playmakers at Wake Forest. Sure didn't have big-time old linemen at Wake Forest, but he put points on the board. So that's the fascinating thing this week. Which O-line cracks and which, which O-line cracks nuts? So that's where the game's won this week. Which I totally agree. Over that game. The O-line that takes over the game will enable the quarterback to get all the praise when the game's over. Because both those guys are going to hit guys if they're clean. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think that Ohio State has um, NFL guards with Donnie Jackson being a first-round pick and a lot of Mel Kuyper's mock drafts. Uh, Matt Jones being a mid- to late-round pick as a, as a guard. Um, you know, again, Carson Hintzman is still finding his way, trying to figure it out. But Notre Dame is kind of the inverse. They've got Joe Alt. They've got two NFL tackles. Yeah, and they've got yeah. young guys at guard. So, you know, it's like 
Is this the Mike Hall, Tyler Williams game? I think it is. I think there's a lot of pressure on him. I think this is a Sonny Sal's game. You know, if he's if he's out there, he didn't play much versus uh, the full spread Western Kentucky look. But I'm telling you, you got to pressure these guys. I think you have to affect the interior of the offensive line just because of the experience level, the lack of experience. Uh, frankly, you know, if I'm Jack Sawyer and I'm JT Tumalo, this is this is the money game. This is you're playing right. Joe Alt, top ten, top fifteen pick. You know, if you want to go be that big dog, be that guy that makes a lot of money, like Vernon Golson in 07, my senior year, he beat Jake Long for a sack, and that got him propelled up to the number six pick. And he dominated Jake Long, Stephen Schilling, the two tackles, both NFL tackles from Michigan. And Vernon, you know, when you play these marquee matchups, if you've got the guy who's supposed to be the guy, like Joe Alt, Joe Alt is projected top 15 pick, left tackle, franchise type guy, if I'm Jack and JT, man, this is where you go make your money. It's not against Youngstown State or Akron or you know whoever, like you know, the uh, the blind mice of uh, Antarctica. You have to go do it against these guys, and I think there's a lot of momentum there. What do you think about what Jim Knowles has done? He's gone away from the cover. He's gone away from the three safeties. Jordan Hancock is playing a ton of nickel. Praise Jesus that we have yeah. a corner playing in that slot. Uh, covering guys uh uh josh potter has been playing really really well really strong yeah. i think tommy and still yeah. have been great but what do you make of what jim Knowles has done to adjust to the passing offense and, and some of the prolific offices that we play um again you know indiana yes i'll say not very prolific western kentucky number one in the passing offense oh. last year um yeah, but at least so. you shut them down but you know what do you make of the adjustments that we've made well i think they were necessary and i think you know, when the season ended last year and you sit down with your coaches and go over each guy's performance, I think Ryan Day had to come to Jesus meeting with, with Jim Knowles and said, you cannot be so reckless. You're not at Duke anymore. Yeah. We don't have to take all these chances. We have athletes. We've never had guys like this before. Don't put us in bad positions. You're asking players to do things they can't do. You know what I mean? When you're when you want to play man, that's fine. I love playing man. Jeff Halfley loved playing man with his three corners and Jordan Fuller 15 yards off the ball in the middle of the field to protect the back end. I love that. But you're gonna play man with Ronnie Hickman, Lathan Ransom, and Tanner McAllister. And then you've got Jack Sawyer standing up, so you lose that pass rusher. He's in coverage a lot. Like it ain't gonna work. And you know, we can pop the tape in of Georgia and Michigan, and it did not work. But to Jim Knowles' credit, he's, it looks like he has changed. And you can tell by his interviews. He talks about protecting the back end, not giving up big plays. I love it. I mean, you don't need to take chances. You know what I mean? And I, I think there's a time and a place for that, but not consistent cover zero where you've got these Three safeties that I can't stand in man man conditions. I hate it. Now, if you're going to play three safeties and Sonny's one of them, where Sonny's your wild card, you can put him, you can line him up, you know, outside the shoulder of, of Jack Sawyer and, and let that tackle figure out what he's going to do now. You can put Sonny 20 yards off the ball. You can put Sonny as a linebacker. I love being creative with Sonny. So I love what they're doing right now. If you look last week against a passing team, I think Hancock got 50 snaps and Sonny got, I want to say 27. I have to go back and look, but it's close. Those are close to the numbers. And that's great against a passing team. I have no problem with that. Um, Hancock is a better cover guy than the guys they used last year. You know, whether it's Tanner McAllister or Ronnie Hickman, whatever. So I love what they're doing right now. I think it makes a lot of sense. And whether Jim Knowles came to that on his own, whether Ryan Day sat him down and said, dude, this ain't going to work no more. Mm -hmm. Or you ain't going to be working here no more. <laughs> you know, whether I don't know how it is. You know, you got to give Jim Knowles credit. Um, when things are good, man, defensively, he deserves all the praise. And when it ain't very good, he going to get the blame. So, and that's just the nature. You coached before. You know oh, the yeah. drill. Oh, oh, yeah. You know oh, yeah. Big when time. It works, when it works, you're a good coach. When it doesn't work, you're a bad coach, and you get fired. That's the game. Uh -huh. okay, so right now, Jim Knowles, I love what they're doing. 
Um, so let's see what happens this week. They, they've got to affect Sam Hartman. They've got to affect him. They cannot let him sit back there because he's going to slice them and dice them. Mm-hmm. So knock him off his spot, hit him a few times. I love that pass rush up the middle too because he's not Pat Mahomes in terms yeah. of escapability. So I love that with Ty Leak and Mike Hall. If they have big games and we're talking next week, we're probably going to talk about an Ohio State victory. Huh? Yeah. Well, it's like, I mean, I know you're, you are great friends with Luke Fickle. You think the world of Luke Fickle, you think he's a fantastic coach. Again, you've got great relationships with him when he had Everett Withers in 2013, not very good. Luke, you know, back end, not, not real tight. Sammy Watkins, like 300 yards in the orange bowl. Chris Ash walks in the door, takes over that secondary magically with Luke Fickle still being front, you know, running the front seven magically we win the national championship so again there has to be a concert there has to be guys that really know what they're doing there has to be guys that really believe in what they're doing because again it's not just knowing what you're doing it's getting all of the guys on the field to believe in what you're doing so you had the same you had the same guy same luke fickle uh with everett versus chris and again i think everett is a great human being i really like everett i worked with him fantastic guy chris ash walks in the door Let's get it all cleaned up. Let's get that. Let's get the secondary rugby tackling and in concert yeah, with each he other. Didn't, he didn't, and he didn't bring in some exotic. No, crazy, not at all. It was just be sound fundamentally. Mm-hmm. Be sound with what we're doing, mm-hmm. and that's what Chris did. I mean, Chris is, you know, that that's the genius of Chris. Chris Ash is he didn't come in with some crazy scheme, something wild no one's ever seen before. No, it was just fundamental, basic, solid defense. And that's why Chris uh-huh. is in the NFL today. That's uh-huh. that's who he is, you know? So yeah, I um I like what they're doing right now. I really but you know, let's see, th- this week is gonna tell us a lot. And that's why I like I said, as as I've written every week, I haven't made any season pronouncements on Ohio State since they started. Where, you know, after YSU, it was like we stuck four loss team, maybe five losses. Then after Western Kentucky, we're the best team in the country. No one will touch us. We're undefeated. You know, forget all that. You'll learn something. This is the first benchmark. Yep. You're going to learn something. Man, by Saturday night, you're going to know a lot. So that's where I've, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I think things are set up for Ohio State to succeed. And you got to go do it. I mean, I, so we'll see. We'll, we'll know a lot about this team and where this team's headed on Saturday night, where we I, really don't know right now. You know, are they the team that smothered Western Kentucky? Are they the team that went 7 nothing against YSU in the second half? And that was with that starting O line playing every single play. No. And Ryan Day tried to jam one in on YSU with a couple minutes to go, and he couldn't do it. They couldn't Sorry. score against Y. So who are they? I don't know. We're going to know after this Saturday. We're going to know a lot. I, I I totally agree. I think that, like, defensively with Jim Knowles, he's he's figured out that, hey, I got the big the big sack of chips. Again, if you're playing in the World Series of Poker and they and I peel you off the streets of Canton, Ohio, downtown, versus I peel you off and you're a billionaire, you're going to play the you're going to play that final sack a lot differently if you got nothing to lose versus if you've got a bunch of money to lose. Yeah. And I'm like, well, Jim Knowles, like. I'm like, you've got better players than everybody you play. So act like it, you know, just, just keep them in front of you. Play a little bit yeah. of zone defense. Don't play cover zero. You don't have to go for broke. You're not a Duke where it's like, again, like Western Kentucky, their head coach, God bless him, was the guy that was playing for broke. He was going for it on our own 40 and uh, four, four, fourth and 10 on, on our own 40. No, oh, he's going. Yeah, he, yeah, exactly. So Ohio State, they've got 30 yards to go or 35 yards to go. He's going for it because he's going for broke. Because he's right. you peeled him off the streets of Canton, Ohio, and he's trying to fuck you. Know, he's trying to make it make it work. And maybe you know, well, why can't if I put it to Ohio State, they're going to score in seven plays instead of four plays. So might as well just go for it. And again, that's how Jim Knowles calls defense. And I think that when you tighten it up and you realize, like, hey, I've got. Tommy Eckenberg is still very good linebackers. I've got Mike Hall, Ty Leak. I've got Jack. I've got JT. I've got Denzel's got a lot of momentum. I've got Davison. I've got Jordan Hancock. I've got Josh Proctor's playing fantastic playing so great. far. He's playing, he's, play, 
And, and again, like Josh Proctor is my favorite player maybe ever because he's a six-year guy who got benched after two plays last year, and he didn't transfer to Florida or Miami or wherever, and he stuck around, won the starting job, played with a lot of energy. So, I mean, most guys that are in that situation where they get benched after three plays against Notre Dame and never play again, like they're right. out, they're out ski. So, yeah, but I, he didn't get benched, I, and he didn't get benched for like two guys that were high draft picks. No, yeah, oh my God, no. Good. I mean, yeah. Compared to me, is I, I like Josh <laughs> a lot. I've always liked him. He just like you say, he's older now, and I think yeah. his coverage skills are a hundred times better than what they were when he was a younger player, where he was just a bullet looking yeah. black. You know what yeah. I mean? He was Mike Doss, isn't it? And yeah. Mike Doss yeah. is playing your game right now. You have to be able to cover or they can't put you on the field right now. I like yeah. everything I've seen out of Josh. And and like you said, I thought that that guy was on my transfer hot list right Ooh. after the Notre Dame last year. I thought, this guy ain't going to take this. Yeah. You know what I mean? They sent him to Siberia, and <laughs> he came back. I mean, I give the guy a ton of credit. I mean, I have yeah. a lot of respect for Josh Proctor. Um, so he's a guy that I really want – to see him have a big year, get drafted, you know, I want everything good to happen to that kid, man, because he really, a lot of perseverance, especially now we're in the portal area now. You can't even no. yell at a kid now. You can't even yell at a kid now. No. Let alone get no. It. They're leaving. And Josh stuck it out, got better, did what he had to do. So he, he's a guy, that, and I know you feel the same way, that you just have to root for that kid. That's a guy that yeah. I really want to see have a big monster year get drafted. Yeah, I mean, like Ronnie Hickman left early, didn't get drafted, made the Browns. Yeah, like I want Josh Josh Proctor sixth, seventh round. He if he runs fast, he could go fifth round maybe. He's over He'll age six. Teams too. He'll play special teams. You know the, those NFL rosters. You oh, gotta yeah. Play and you he'll better. Be he'll be tremendous on special teams. I used so, to tell Boom Boom Heron, Boom Heron, who's like my little brother. I told Boom, look, look, here's the deal. You're a nice player. You're not Adrian Peterson. You're not Beanie Wells. You better learn how to cover kickoff because when you're the third running back and you're up on game day, I mean, you're not standing there, you know, eating sunflower seeds with a visor on. You're like running down, splitting somebody's wig on kickoff and. In college and high school, when you're Boom Heron at Warren Harding, you're like Maurice Claret. Oh, you can't be on special teams. Oh, you can't. You're made out of porcelain. I'm like, dude, you better go down there and figure out how to like split an R3, R4, split somebody's wig on kickoff. Because like, that's how you'll make it in the league. That's how you survive. Brian Hartline, again, was a mid-round pick, fourth-round yeah. pick, whatever he was. And he ran down a kickoff and split somebody's wig. And all of a sudden, everything changed. All of a sudden, he got elevated Brian, to being. A... Yeah, Brian also did that at Ohio State, if you remember. You know, oh, I was, I was, I was there. Play. I was there at the Indiana yeah. game when he's supposed to eat. He brought wide receivers ahead of him. You know, yeah. when he was a freshman, redshirt freshman. That's yeah. how, that's the only way to get on the field. And he was a heck of a special teams player. And I asked him yeah. about. That. I'm like, man, you look like you love that. He goes, I hate it. He goes, I don't <laughs> love it. I hate it. He goes, but. It's what I have to do, and it's what I have to do well. It's my job. So, you know, that, yeah, yeah. And that, that'll carry Josh Proctor, I hope. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he will be a heck of a special teams player. He will throw uh, his body where it needs to be thrown. I'm telling you, man, when these guys are getting paid every week and they're just like, man, all I have to do is run down on 15, kickoff, 15 kickoffs, puns, all the ancillary stuff, like, that's the gig. And, like, Brian Hartline, again, he don't want to do it. But he did it, and he ate it up, and magically he climbed the depth chart. He became our number four receiver in 06 and never looked back. Then we the Miami Dolphins. He ran down on kickoff, split a guy's wig. Magically, everybody's like, ooh, this guy's tough. He'll work hard. He'll block. You know, you got to do all the stuff where you get your nails dirty because sometimes a lot of these guys don't want to get their nails dirty. But guys like Brian, guys like Josh Proctor, they get their nails dirty, and all of a sudden they you look, you look down and you're like, Oh, he's played seven years. Wow, that's amazing. Oh, he's played eight years. He's got a couple endorsements and he's made, you know, $10 million. And you're just like, wow, I, I didn't think he was any good or whatever. It's like, like, like Jonathan Cooper, who's a guy who nobody in the universe thought Jonathan Cooper was some 
you know, unbelievable because he's coming on the heels of Chase, Joey, Nick Bosa, Jonathan the Cooper like starts. Jonathan the Cooper, like guys. he he's does like, it. it. I mean, yeah, he's a glow, he's a close kid. He starts for the Broncos and had a sack fumble. He had two sacks yesterday, and people yeah. were just like, "Who's this Jonathan Cooper guy?" I was like, "Well, he's a guy that's like nasty, like really good, good player." And I'm telling you, like those are the kind of guys that. You look down, and you'll be like, man, that guy's got eight years in the league. Man, that guy's made $15 million and whatever. So, well, Bank, I know it's super early. Obviously, it's Monday. What are yeah. your thoughts on Notre Dame? Again, there's a lot of time. You don't have to give me a prediction or anything. Yeah. But, you know, it's Jack Jack Sawyer, Jake the Tubal Lovers, Joe Alt. That's the one that the scouts going to be watching, the GMs going to be watching, the owners are going to be watching. But give me, give me your juice right now. Obviously, this is the best quarterback we'll probably play all season. How do we affect the quarterback? What do we need to do to win this game? Yeah, I think a key for Ohio State is being able to get pressure with four. Because if you blitz Sam Hartman, Sam Hartman has played in 60 college games, I'm guessing, by now. He's played a lot of football. Okay, that guy's yeah. played in 50 games for sure. Mm -hmm. If you blitz him and you don't get home, he will kill you. Yeah. So if you can get home with four – and then drop seven in the back end, you know, he's going to have a hard time finding somebody back there. It looks like a picket fence back there when you're throwing against seven as compared to when you're throwing against five. You know what I mean? So if I, that's that's the first key I'm looking at is does Ohio State have to bring linebackers or corners off the edge to affect Sam Hartman? If they can affect him with four and drop seven, there are not going to be many openings back there because you're not defending – Randy Moss and Chris Carter. You know, no. Notre Dame receivers, they're okay. They're D1 guys. I mean, they can hurt you, but yet, you know, it's it's, it's not defending uh, Marvin Harrison and the Mecca of Buca. So, oh, God, first key no. to me is pressuring Sam Hartman with four. That would be my first key. Well, I, I, I just think they're slow. They're possession guys. Again, for me, the whole game comes down to stopping the running game. I mean, they're running. Their running back has like 570 yards through yeah, exactly. three games. He's a good runner. And he's a hammer. He's a hammer. And again, I think Marcus Freeman, who was my teammate, great friend of mine, guy that invited me to training camp, was literally like, you know, shorten the game. I mean, if you play the Buckeyes and you're not trying to shorten the game, if you're a complete total idiot, you try to get in a track with the Ohio State, and you'll get your you'll get whooped. It's like trying, it's like me and you getting the spikes on and going against Usain Bolt. We're going to get smoked, murdered, killed. But if me and you get Usain Bolt in a fist fight, we're probably going to murder him. Yeah, play in a phone booth. Which, yeah. which Marcus was able to do last year. If you remember that yep. game, Marcus did kind of have the style go his way. He just didn't oh. have a quarterback. Did you watch Alabama yeah. play the other day with that quarterback? Oh, boy. Okay. Oh boy. Now, get the style of play. Say last year, the Notre Dame game. Okay. What yeah. if Marcus would have had Sam Hartman in that game instead of Tyler Buckner? What if Nick Saban had <laughs> Sam Hartman right now in, instead of Nick That's what I'm saying. So, so yeah. Marcus was able to get the game played at his pace last year. No. Marcus wants a game in the teens. You know what no. I mean? Mm -hmm. Ryan wants that game in the 40s. Ryan, yep. Ryan Day wants a game that's just a high scoring, flying up and down the field all day long. Yep. And Marcus wants old time Jim Trestle football. That's what Marcus yeah. Freeman wants. So oh, yeah. which, which guy controls the style of play? You know, I, and if a high state busts out 17 3, 14 0, then your style of play is now out the window. Yep. You, you need a new game plan at that point. But, you know, who gets the game played the way they want it played? Last year, Marcus did get that game played the way he wanted it. And that was going against, you know, CJ and that group, Paris Johnson, all those NFL dudes. Oh, Martin yeah. Just over, Trey Henderson. And he, and he had that game played the way he wanted to. He just was out there without a quarterback. You can't play this yeah. game without a quarterback. Yeah. So. I mean, that's, that's to me, that is the biggest difference between last year and this year. It's not – it's not DeWan, it's not Paris, it's not all the guys we lost. They have a real quarterback this year. So that yeah. is going to be 
they, they don't have Tyler Buchner who got benched by Nick Saban in one quarter. You know, I mean, they've got a real quarterback who's played six years and, and he's, that guy's he's been out there forever. He's your yeah. age. I think. I know. I think you might be your age, <laughs> but he's 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 he's, he, he's real good. And again, he's you got to get after him. At all, but nobody throws well when they're on the ground. So, hey, yeah. that's, that's that 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 that's that's the quote I would put on on the wall to Woody right now. Is I'd say, look, nobody throws well when they're affected and they're on the ground. Bill Bank Green, we'll put that up there. Yeah. So, a- any final thoughts? We'll wrap this thing up. Appreciate you, Bank. Um, yeah. Any final thoughts as we do this? Yeah, a couple of them is I-, I hate to get through this podcast and not mention Julian Fleming. Um, dude, he didn't get a lot of catches or touches the other day. Yeah, he was a monster mm-hmm. blocking on the edge. I mean, that was as good a wide receiver blocking performance. And nobody cares about that. Nobody's ever going to talk about it. But I guarantee you, Brian Hartline shook Julian Fleming's hand after that game. Julian And Julian came in as the number one wide receiver in America. He didn't think of himself as a blocker when he was coming out of high school. So as we're propping Josh Proctor on the defensive side, I think you got to mention Julian Fleming on the offensive side for doing – you talked about getting your nails dirty, you know, doing the dirty work. I mean, Julian Fleming, I mean, was a monster the other day. I mean, he was killing people. It was, he was physical and tough and, you know, props to him for that. And the second thing is Brandon Baker, O tackle out of California makes his decision next Sunday. And I mean, this is a tight one. I've checked in with everybody I can check in with when it was a Ohio state versus Oregon battle, even though his brother played at Oregon, I was supremely confident that Ohio State was going to win that thing. And here comes Texas out of nowhere that, man, that that Texas NIL money is, that's a tough one to overcome. So we'll see. I still think Ohio State can win this one. I love the relationship Justin Fry has with the family, with Brandon Baker. It goes back a long way. Had a great official visit to Ohio State. He's got to be able to see what, you know, Justin Fry did in one year with Paris and Dewan. you know, so I still think Ohio State can get him. I, I liked it a lot better when it was OSU versus Oregon. And now that third <laughs> prior there with Texas and the oil men. And so we'll see. But I mean, they need this guy. They yeah. need this guy. Yeah. This guy takes that O line group. They got four commits right now in the O line. Brandon Baker takes it from, you know, pretty good to great. Great. If you get Brandon Baker along with Ian Moore, then you can slow develop the Twins and Mark May. So keep your eye on that one, man. It's coming up next Sunday, you know, day after the Notre Dame game. And that one is going to be – that one's going to be huge. And everybody I check with, nobody seems to know anything. I checked on 24-7. No crystal ball picks yet. So this one's being kept under wrap. And I'm going to keep digging all week to try to come up with something here. I loved OSU versus Oregon. I've got OSU versus Texas as a toss-up. I think Oregon's out of it. So we'll see. Uh, to watch When you're all wrapped up in that Notre Dame game Saturday night, whether it's a win or a loss, on Sunday, Brandon Baker commits. Yeah, I, I would empty the vault for Brandon Baker. Again, Bank, you're from Maslin Perry. I'm a Maslin guy. Our Maslin boys whooped up on our three St. Ed's, Ohio State, Michigan commits. So... You know, we need a guy that can stand in. Again, you watch when the twos come in. I always, I always read the tea leaves. They want Luke Montgomery to be their starting right tackle next year. I mean, they're, they're going to have Jimmy Josh Simmons at left tackle. They got Luke repping at right tackle. So next year, when Josh Fry was on, they're going to have him in there. So I think that that's ripe for the pickings. I think if you're Brandon Baker, you can be the left tackle in a year after Jimmy Josh Simmons goes to the league. You know, but again, like, and I think the twins... They'll be okay, but if you look at Maslin's recruiting rankings, you're not seeing the guys going to the SEC, any Ohio State guys, Michigan guys. And, and, the film's and, out there. you got to watch that Pringle kid from Maslin. Uh, Darian Pringle, I think it's Dorian Pringle. I've never mon- heard of him. Monster. I know who he is now. He's, yeah. like, he's the perfect Mac recruit. He's going to Bowling Green. He's like a 5'11", 230-pound yeah. ball. He wrecked. Yeah. St. Ed's ran the ball 31 times for 59 yards. They haven't had a stat like that (laughs) in 
forever at St. Ed's. St. Ed's would run the ball on the Browns. They didn't run it on Maslin. And Ed Dorian Pringle might have had 15 tackles in that game, and he affected everything. Or, like you said, know, Ohio State's going to recruit because of the measurables and the size. But on a Friday night in a game you got to win, I want that dude on my side. He was the best football player in the field with all well, the eh. Ohio State, Michigan commands. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah, yeah. the best football player on that field by far. Yeah, and you you know what his name's going to be? Bank after one year, transfer portal Pringle. Portal, we'll call him Portal Pringle because he'll be he'll be going yeah. to Bama or Auburn or Georgia or Michigan because they'll be like he'll go to Bowling Green. He'll start as a freshman. He'll have 20, 20 tackles for a loss and ten sacks. And they'll be like, "Wow, how do we miss this Portal guy, Maslin Tiger, Portal Pringle?" Like they'll be like, "Yeah." He's, yeah, it, he, the thing was, he's so versatile. When they lined him up <laughs> on the edge, I mean, he just smoked those tackles for St. Ed's. But then a lot of times they lined him up as a mic backer in the middle of the field, and he was just on a search and destroy, fine ball, no. see ball, kill kill runner. He was on that no. type of mode. He, pre- he had sacks. I mean, he wrecked that game. He wrecked St. Ed's. Nobody wrecked St. Ed's. You, no. don't wreck St. Ed's. you don't wreck their O-line over the years. No. He wrecked so I never heard of the kid before, um, even though I live five minutes from where he's at. And, and I had to up. you know, you got to you got to prop the kid, man. I know he's committed to Bowling Green. Um, oh. This is a two star. If I had my hand in that pie, he'd be a three star right now. Just after that game. Yeah. And, um, you know, Dorian Pringle, man, kid from Mouse loved watching that film. Just loved the effort, how he played. And to see a defensive player wreck St. Ed's, I've never seen it. I've been doing this stuff for over 20 years. I've never uh, seen anyone wreck St. Ed's. Oh. Uh, uh, props to Dorian uh, Pringle. I wanted to get his name out. Absolutely. And props to Maslin guys because Maslin guys are tough. Well, appreciate yeah, you, Bank. <laughs> Except me. You can still keep me at two stars, Bank. We're all good. So, well, I appreciate you, brother. I know that you're a diehard. I, I just have to get the last question. What do you think of your Steelers tonight? Because we got that number, that Monday Night Football game is about to kick off down in uh, Heinz Field. I still call it Heinz Field. What do you think of your Steelers tonight yeah. versus the Browns? T.J. Watt going against Dewan Jones. <laughs> Love you, Dewan. <laughs> You're the best, buddy. If Dewan controls T.J. Watt, the Browns are going to win. If T.J. is T.J. and teaches Dewan what the big boy league's all about, then the Steelers are going to win. Well, I think Dewan will dominate T.J. because you know why. He's got a, he's got, he, he'll, he'll channel Greg Sudoir and it'll be dominant. <laughs> so. well, one doesn't have to worry about his car being broken down or anything like that. Although no. he, have, he might have a driver's license now. I don't know. He did not have a driver's license in Ohio State. But, uh, he's got a car now. He's, 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 he doesn't have to Uber to the game from Cleveland, so that's great. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good start. He used to take a, take a bus back home to Indianapolis. Oh, I know he was on the Greyhound hitting me up. Yeah, so, yeah. Bank, you know. are the you are the absolute best, my man. I appreciate you. We're gonna wrap this thing up as always. We got our boy <laughs> Bill the Bank Green killing the game as always. Thank you so much, uh, Scoop family. Thank you everyone that tuned in tonight. If you enjoyed this content, please leave us a like, click subscribe, and also click that little alert button if you enjoy our live content. You'll get a little alert every time we go live. But thank you guys so much, as always. Thank you so much, Buckeye Nation. Thank you, Scoop family. Shout out where you guys are watching from. I'd love to see where you guys are watching from. And I also want to see who's going to be the MVP of the, of the Notre Dame game. I got Tommy Eichenberg, Trey Henderson. Who's better than that? Let me know. Hit me up. Appreciate y'all. And go Bucks. Let's go here. Let's go, girl.